it started well when I, I was you know brought up in South London and uh, I had a, a great upbringing. I've got four elder sisters. I'm the only boy then, and you know, and I, had a, I had a great upbringing. I didn't know what racism was, you know, and uh, I, I started playing football. I uh, went to Fulham under Malcolm McDonald, um, and the very f first away game at Leeds was myself and Paul Parker. We were playing away. We we're losing one nil, and we both ran to get the ball to to try it on for a corner, and, and the whole of the Leeds stand, about fifteen thousand people, started doing the Nazi salute towards us and then I, I you know I just wanted the ground to open up and eat me up and I've never actually experienced anything like that or, or pull. Um and then I, I went back and had to decide whether I wanted to carry on playing football and then I started to work out what had happened. I look look at the history of, of the game and the, the influence that black players had had on the game and what they'd come through and I realised that if I wanted to be a professional football footballer I'd have to kinda of go through that but actually keep quiet doing it as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and then uh, and I went to Portsmouth and I got spat at by a little boy coming off the pitch, you know, through the fence. And then, and then it went on. When I finished playing the game, um, I had loads of people saying, "Look, we want you to be a manager. We want you to to be a, a role model." So I became a manager at Gloucester City Football Club, and uh, we played the game. Um, uh, I think it was at, when I was about I was 32, so I, I'd still look like I still look quite fit to be honest. Then I was all right, and I had a tracksuit on. I was a tracksuit manager. You still look far too fit for yes. me. <laughs> 50, 51. I wait, wait till I stand up. I look fitter sat down than I do stood up. <laughs> but um, it's uh, yeah. No, I went up to the boardroom, and the, the chairman Keith Garner was in the boardroom, and uh, the guy in the board uh, in front of the boardroom wouldn't let me in. Um, and uh, so I had to go down, ring my chairman, and he came out and said, "This is the manager of my football club. He should be allowed in the boardroom." And the guy said, "Oh, I'm really sorry. You can understand." And, and chairman, my chairman went absolutely mad, and I said, "Look, you could you can stick your boardroom." And I realised that there was a, a lot more to do. Um, and then I got in touch with, well, Jed, Jed Grebby from Show Racing Red Car got in touch with me and I thought, you know, this is a way to do something positive, to turn all those negative experiences into something positive. And you can make as many speeches, which is really important, but when I go into schools and, and I've got 30 kids in front of me and I've got their attention and I can uh, just relate these stories, but in, not in a negative way because, you know, yeah, there was a negative side to it, but I've come out the other side and, and it... The, when you relate these stories, kids understand. They said, well, why did people treat you like that? You know, they, they don't understand why people treated you like that. Yeah. I said, it's good, well, just because of the colour of my skin. They said, well, that's ridiculous. And having spent two hours with you know, 30 kids you know, a couple of times a day doing workshops, it's really, really re rewarding. And so that's why I got involved with Shy Racing and Red Card, because I do feel it's the, it's the kids that we can change their, their attitudes towards, towards racism. Well, you know, when you, for me, when you are a, a kind of story like that, it's... Um it kind of makes my blood boil. God knows what it does to you. And of course, my experience from uh, a teenager, a young lad, and then a teenager in Liverpool in the 60s um, is slightly different because my uh, path uh, opposing racism really comes from my politics. I realise that any workers, whether they be black, women, disabled, who are being discriminated against, also affected the solidarity um, and so I first got involved in anti-racist um, uh, uh, issues in Liverpool. The National Front uh, were quite uh, um, busy and prevalent and uh, we needed to go out on the street and confront them which we did. Um, some things don't go away incidentally a, a group of racists attended uh, to march through Liverpool just a couple of weeks yeah. ago and uh, fantastically uh, uh, hundreds, thousands turned out and they never even got out of Lime Street wow. and the message was you're not welcome in our city and that made me very proud. Uh, of course my whole life has been there for fighting the evil of, of racism and I do see it as an evil. Um, I'm a big football fan, as you know, Leroy, yeah. and a uh, big Liverpool fan. Howard Gale was uh, the first kind of black player who played for Liverpool. And to be honest, uh, uh, I was deeply unhappy about some of the experiences that I had mm. on, on, on our own terraces. Watching uh, black players, I got into a number of fights on the terraces. It wasn't until really John Barnes... Uh, came to Liverpool that suddenly uh, the, the racist attitude, and I think it's fair to say 
they, they have vanished. I mean, you obviously get the odd uh, individuals, but now uh, any form of um, uh, of attack on a black player uh, is, is turned on by the crowd, and that gives you great encouragement. Mm. Uh, so all my life, this kind of evil uh, of uh, of racism has been central to my politics, m my outlook on life, uh, and the way, of course, we should have a united community, which is why, for me, Show Racism, the Red Card, is a fantastic organisation. Um, uh, this is a bit... Uh, I don't know whether it's a bit rash for me to say this, but it's perhaps... Uh, the most important uh, organisation that we're involved in. I've seen you in action, I've seen you personally, Leroy, and I've seen other role models where you meet with young kids who, of course, themselves have got no racism born into them, but who are subjected to listening to what the parents say, listening to what happens out in the street, and the way uh, Show Racism the Red Card actually tries to bring that out I've been to a number of events and it is fantastic because uh, it's my view that the only way that you can kick racism out of football is if you kick racism out of the community. Absolutely. Uh, you're never going to be able to say, oh, there's no racism in football anymore, but there's still plenty of it in, 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 in our communities. And uh, it's a great organisation. I think uh, we not only will we continue to support it but the idea of linking up with you and our schools program we mm -hmm. should do that because uh, our schools program is about going in to meet uh, 15 and 16 year olds right. just as they're possibly going into the world of work to tell them what trade unions are right. and i think we can link up together but it's uh, it's it's one of the most important issues um in in our in our strategy at the moment. Absolutely, well I totally, I totally agree with you. I mean, it's interesting about 15 or 16 years because we do do workshops with them, but you know, I've worked with year five, like what, 10, 11 year old kids. And uh, it's a, it is about education. And if you, uh, maybe this isn't a great analogy, but I was driving down the street the other day and watching people smoking outside buildings. Now it wasn't a long ago where people say, no, you can't ban smoking. You know, we used to go into pubs and everybody was smoking to okay. pubs, but now it's through education, yeah. nobody smokes in public places, in restaurants, no. people go outside, and in a very short period of time, people wouldn't ever think of smoking in buildings. But that's the same for racism. And if you educate young kids, because I've had kids come up to me and say, you know what, yeah, well, our dad, he looks at the telling and he says racist things. We try and tell him you can't do that because the kids get it. And when people say it's about peer pressure, well, so a lot of kids are more, more intelligent than that. They know what's right and, and, they, and they, they know what's wrong. Um, and I've had older people come up to me. This, this is also about edu educating older people because oh. older people feel like um, they, they're in a position where they can't say anything because they say anything is perceived as being racist. And I had to explain to an old, older lady why I prefer to be called black instead of being coloured. And she always said, well, I didn't like to use the word black because th I thought that was really rude. Yeah, yeah. I was always being polite. And I said, no, I actually prefer to be called black. And she said to me, but if when, when I, 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 I worried about it because I didn't want anybody to think I was racist. So I ended up saying nothing. I said, look, I said, I totally understand where you're coming from. You needed someone like myself who is black to just, I know you're not racist. You might have used the wrong terminology, which yeah. isn't racist in itself. But for a long time, people used the wrong terms and they were, they were labelled the racist and this and that. Whereas if it had been explained to them, they said, look, I'm really sorry, then they would go out and re-educate themselves. Absolutely. And the question of education, of course, mm. is, is critical and the use of language is, uh, is important. In, in Unite, of course, we've set about trying to make certain that all our constitutional structures of the union are... Uh, such that uh, there's a proportionality for our uh, uh, black, uh, Asian and ethnic um, members. Um, and we're, you know, we've made enormous advances. And those advances haven't just simply come without confronting exactly what you're saying, the, uh, the underlying kind of racist uh, views that may have been uh, prevalent in a number of workplaces. Mm. Uh, but driven by uh, ignorance. And once you expose that ignorance, and once you also give other workers the 
a view that says, oh, well, I can't speak out against somebody who I believe has been racist, but I was a bit scared to kind of challenge them, but yeah. it's okay to challenge them. Then the change in my union over the past 30 years has yeah. been dramatic. Um, and of course, we continue to do that within our own union. We're far from perfect. We uh, don't have enough uh, uh, black and Asian uh, officers. Uh, we're, we're trying to do something about that. Um, whenever you're dealing with these issues, it's important all the time to bring uh, people with you, to bring white yeah. people with you, so that there isn't a belief that somebody is getting better treatment than them, and that then stirs the, uh, the, 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 the prejudices uh, that, that people may uh, have. And uh, we work at it, work hard at it, and I... I'm encouraged by the progress we make. I, I'm always, though, yeah. one of these that wants us to go a lot further and a lot quicker. But we are making those uh, those uh, advances. And again, having an association with uh, Show Race and the Red Card assists us in that. Yeah. Uh, we've had, uh, you know, a number of our regions engage with some of the work that you do out in the regions and uh, the feedback I've got is that uh, wow this had a huge impact on people much more than me making a speech from a platform mm -hmm. um, so education is the absolute key and mm -hmm. you do I, I mean you you must you must get enormous satisfaction when you I mean I know when I've watched from the sidelines and I've seen the kids mm -hmm. and and of course kids at 10 11 year age they they can be very very honest and yeah. they say well my dad said that and mm -hmm. what's wrong with that and then the same kids will come back and say yeah that is wrong yeah. you know I'm gonna go and tell my dad mm -hmm. that must give you enormous kind of uh, you know pride and, and and hope for the future absolutely and you know what um when I started doing it, yeah, I thought I'd like, just go in and, and talk to, to 30 children for a couple of hours and do a little bit of, of football with them. But you have to be mentally prepared and physically pre prepared because when you go and you come out exhausted with all the questions that they, they <laughs> ask and, and you know what, they, there's, there's no, they, they are direct and to the point, these, these questions. And, and you want, it's a shame adults aren't more like that because we get a lot more done uh, um, because... You know, you go into and they said, look, why is there racism? It's just ridiculous. It's stupid. You know, why should that? You know, and I said, well, you know, people will tell you that, you know, in history that we've always had racism. And because we've always had it, it's always going to be there. Well, that's not wrong because, you know, with my late father would never have thought that Barack Obama would be president of the United States mm -hmm. now after what he went through. Um, yeah, and after, you know, slavery was abolished, you never thought that we'd, we'd come this far. But coming back to what you're doing with, with, with Unite, um, and I call it positive discrimination. And I just feel that lots of people, including the government, uh, including people in power, always seem to, to think that uh, uh, if we just you know, do what we've been doing for many, many years, things will sort themselves out. But it, it doesn't, because people perceive me, when I walk into a room, people have always perceived me to be different to other people. That's, that's, just, that's just life, because I'm not, I don't look like I come from this country, as I'm British and I was brought up in this country. And you have to do that through positive discrimination. You have to, to let people know that it isn't a problem to think like that, but to rationalise it when they do think about it. Because we all have, we have, have uh, ingrained uh, uh, um, discrimination or prejudices that we have to deal with, including myself. But the way to deal with it is to say this, I have got this prejudice, but I'm going to make sure that I deal with it. And, and, this, is, and this is the point about uh, why the, the, the cause is still very prevalent today and goes back to this issue about uh, racism in football will only vanish because if you look at what's happening in boardrooms or senior management roles there isn't enough black people uh, coming through and then you relate that into football of course and where's the black managers exactly. and you know it, it is extraordinary to think that uh, we've got so few black managers and what also strikes me is uh, we, we do have a few black managers but uh, if the black manager like white managers get sacked uh, the fact is that the white manager that gets sacked has probably got an offer of a job three weeks later mm. Uh, but the black manager who gets sacked drifts away mm. and that is a reflection of what's happening in society and so it's all about how show racism links the the, the challenge to use uses the vehicle of football which mm. is 
uh, which is the, the greatest kind of sport in the world. Mm -hmm. And I only wish uh, when I played it, I had about a tenth of the talent that you had. <laughs> uh, but a great, great kind of medium to raise these particular issues. We, you know, we're engaged obviously in lots of campaigns, we're engaged in raising the issues of, uh, of why there hasn't been sufficient promotion for black people. If you take the health uh, sector, which is a good example really, um, you know, lots of black and Asian and ethnic minorities working in the health service without Without them, this issue of immigration, without, without them, our, the jewel in our society yeah. would collapse. And yet you start looking at the higher levels within, uh, w within the health sector and there's very few black faces. And so the issue of education, of challenging and make, making people think. I mean, I've had, mm. I've had many examples when, uh, you know, with my shop stewards and that where you get into a debate and a discussion about things and have challenged prejudices mm -hmm. and when you challenge the prejudice it it can evaporate yes. my experience is it evaporates because people's arguments suddenly they realize themselves actually this is nonsense Absolutely. what i'm talking about yeah. here which is why just to put a political element into it uh, our union is uh, is committed to exposing UKIP. I believe UKIP is a very dangerous organisation mm -hmm. because it gives respectability to prejudice yes. and bigotry, and we want to kind of expose UKIP for for what they are, and um, we want to try and explode the myths that are going round about migrant workers mm -hmm. and about immigration. Um, and really for me, the, everything that you're doing and all that you're involved in is, is uh, really, really helpful to, to the thrust that we, we're going. That you said before, you said before that uh, somebody said, oh, well, we've always had racism. Yeah, uh, yes, because mm -hmm. the powers that be, the, the establishment, the elites, always try to divide people yeah. so that they can rule, of course, uh, it's got to be challenged. Absolutely, and it is, you mentioned UKIP, but everything they do is built on fear. Yeah. And everything we do is built on, on the opposite, as in, on in hope. challenge and hope yeah. and positivity and challenging things. Because every time something happens, it's a chance to educate as well. Now, there needs to be, you know, if somebody does something wrong, obviously there needs to be punishment. But alongside it, there needs to be a carrot as well. And in my um, experience of, of people, 99.9% .9 of people, if they've done something wrong, say, look, I didn't realise we'd done something wrong. And that's what Show Racing in Red Car is about. It's about making sure that if you are ignorant, and there are people who are ignorant and use the wrong language, that you are educated and you stop using that sort of language. Because I have too many people who say it's political correctness. Mm. And, you know, and, and, and I've, I've seen where language can take us. I've got, I've got five children. Um, I call them mixed heritage. And, and this term, mixed race, it, well, what does that say? That one, my, the partner, my partner is... is uh, it's human, and yeah, I'm an alien. Absolutely. You know, you know. So, and it's used, uh, uh, but at the highest levels, it's what used. Your different races. There's only one race, and if you go into schools and you tell kids there's only one race, they totally understand that. But you go to an adult who's been to university, they they've come up with some unbelievable argument. Well, no, it's it's really quite simple. We are all one people, and and that needs to be, uh, and that needs to be uh, uh, shared. And and people aren't even aware of that. So it's the simplest things. You start from a very simple base. I hear people saying, look, it's only banter, and, and you know, I know the difference between banter and racism, and, and when you use language on a regular basis, it, it, it kind of diminishes what a person thinks about themselves, uh, you know, especially children. It makes them feel like nothing when they, they're called names on a regular basis, and it all starts at school, and that's what Show Race and Red Card go and do. So I feel, because Show Race and Red Cards have been going now 20, 20 odd years now, I think there's a next generation of people coming out of the schools who have been touched by show racing the red card, they will totally understand what language does to people and they'll make sure that their children do not fall into the same traps as, as, as people did in the 70s, 80s and 90s where language wasn't important. Language is the most important thing. And I come back to, you know, people say, what is the, the highest form of discrimination? And I said, well, at the moment, it's not even language, it's being ignored. You know, people go into a community and people aren't prepared to talk to them because they look a certain way, because they, they, they might be a Muslim. We have to get over those barriers where you're not frightened of what somebody looks like. In fact, you want to engage with people, w learn about what they're about, and 
Now, I'll tell you what, if they do that, it will enhance their lives, which it has in Britain for a long, long time. You know, my parents came over yeah, in the 50s, and Britain has been wonderful with lots of friends and, and, and the experience that they've, they've shared with people in terms of and forward and backwards. You know, we had friends down the road used to freeze chips and freeze fish, and we never had fish and chips in our lives. We thought it was absolutely wonderful. <laughs> and they come around our house and eat plantain, and it's very simple things like this which gets people to engage and understand what people are about. And, and that's what Show Race and Red Card kind of epitomise. Yeah, fantastic. And that's why, you know, we need to uh, join good people together from all kinds of different organisations mm. uh, who are trying to do that in order also to put pressure on governments yeah. for them to give a lead, you know, instead of this divisiveness. And unfortunately, the current government, in fact, the Prime Minister only recently talked about the swarms coming over mm. uh, through Europe, given a a completely, you know, these are these are human beings yes. with, with kids the same as we've got, just trying desperately for a better life and escaping. Uh, uh, and once you start talking to people about that, the response is incredible. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've had experiences of that. The ordinary people, I think, are inherently good. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you've got if, if if you've got people who are racist and. And, and propagate racist language and uh, if, if, if it's not challenged yeah. it can be like a rotten apple in a barrel you yeah. know the, the rest of the barrel becomes rotted and yeah. which is why we've always got to stand up to it and that takes me back right you know to when I was a young kid 17 years of age I had the the choice whether I stood on the sidelines and allowed the National Front to pedal their filth and their poison or their evil or or get off the sidelines and go and punch them, uh, yeah. and I'm not. I'm, I wasn't. Aver I wasn't averse to that in those days. So, yeah. it, it is about us s working together, trying to change uh, government's attitude and and and, and their, their their language yeah. about exposing the myths about not allowing uh, any form of respectability to be given to uh, organisations like UKIP or, or anybody else and continuing to educate and my experience over a long time, I'm a lot older than you Leroy, well, is, so. um, <laughs> is, uh, is that it works, we are making advances, of course there will always be other issues, you write about the current Muslim situation, Islamophobia, mm -hmm. Um, and we have to constantly challenge that. We have to work with the Muslim community as well, and we're doing that. Mm -hmm. We're asking the leaders of the Muslim uh, communities to be more proactive yes, in, in, in their uh, you know, condemnation of extremism on the one hand, but also engaging in, uh, in, in community activities. And I, I see that as the way forward. And I, I feel very confident about where we are, and that's why I'm so so pleased to be associated with show races and the red card we're delighted that you are associated with us and if um, you know, government could have your attitude in terms of you know i think if they supported charities like show race and the red card i think half their work would be done you know they you know the, the obviously the recent years the funding has disappeared on a lot of on a lot of fronts mm. um but i think if governments recognize what charities like show race and the red card would do i think in the long term it would save them a lot of time they'd have a lot easier uh, the society would be a lot easier to for them to 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 handle so if we were to just be able to get some mps of uh, labor conservative lived any of them mm -hmm. to just come along to one event yes one of it <laughs> yeah and they would be captivated in in the way that i was um, uh, it is wonderful to see the work that you do the way you do it you've got a fantastic team a great team of uh, educators and uh, people who facilitate discussions with the kids and I I've just been bowled over by it so long may it continue thanks very much sir